Okay. Spirit Science Episode 2. Chakras. So I've already watched this episode and I can say right now, this one's not quite as mind-numbingly awful as the first one. This is mostly just a bunch of word salad that sounds good to someone who doesn't know what these words mean, but when you hear and understand what the words mean, yeah, it's meaningless drivel. Still, I need alcohol to take on this. I think it needs a little bit of uh, improving. Is this going to work? Good enough. Man, know thyself, and thou shalt know the universe and God. Actually, a quote from Pythagoras, so, you know, already off to a better start than we were before. The first minute or so of this video, mostly just a recap of what was said before. However, it does include this one bit. We've been growing more and more disharmonic for about 13,000 years now. It's in our DNA, and it's something that we're passing through as a species. DNA and evolution does not work that way! Uh, if I really need to go into why, then why the hell are you watching me? Go watch someone like Aaron Raw. Go watch someone like Marty Mer, who's also doing a review of this series. You should check him out. Ugh. Anyway. Let's proceed. Now, for us to even start to understand chakras, first we have to understand the basics of light and color. Light and color, uh, you know, those are already pretty well understood in the field of optics. I'm not sure why you'd want to go over them again here in a video on spirit science. If you take pure light and shine it through a prism, the light will break into a spectrum of seven colors. Actually, no, it doesn't break into a spectrum of seven colors. Well, a spectrum, by its very definition, is a... Although, you look at it, you see seven main colors, there's actually a... It's a gradient is what you see. You see every single color there is in that line, except it's broken up by the different wavelengths which we perceive as the colors. There's no actual yellow place there. There's a place where it goes from green to yellow, uh, from blue to green to yellow, but there's no one particular place where you can say this has stopped becoming yellow and is now green, or this has stopped being green and is now blue. We familiarly recognize this as the spectrum of the rainbow, or even more familiar, the basic palette in Photoshop. <laughs> Actually, it's not very funny at all. What you might not know about color is that each color has its own vibration. Red has the longest wavelength and the slowest vibration frequency. We recognize this as warm and stimulating. Violet has the shortest wavelength and the fastest frequency, and we recognize it as cool and calming. I don't think I have to describe what happens between these two colors, it's just a frequency change. That's not what frequency means. A vibration has a frequency, but not every frequency has a vibration. Now, in modern science, we've learned that certain colors can stimulate mental activity. <sighs> not really. Now, granted, we have associated cer certain colors with being calm, blues, or being angry, such as red, yellow, cowardice, I guess, but uh, whether those are actually scientific or not, I doubt. Now, I know there has been some research into how colors affect perception and certain, most people perceive colors in certain ways, however, that's not universal. In fact, it's very much a cultural thing. Uh, the studies I can remember, and I'll link it if I can find it, uh, there are actually some cultures who are not familiar with certain colors just by their words. Like, you can show them a certain palette of greens and they'll be able to pick out individual green colors, but you show them a yellow and they're unable to distinguish it from any other yellow, for instance. I hope I can find that study. If I can, I will link it below. But I don't think it's quite as cut and dry as he's making it.
We know that we need light energy for nourishing our brain, emotion, physical body. Vitamin D? I'm just putting it out there. And perhaps more importantly, our chakras. Uh, the hat prevents any damage to the actual face. A chakra is a wheel-like vortex spinning in a circular motion within the body. This forms a vacuum in the center that draws in energy on a vibratory level. It can draw in anything from color vibration to microwaves to energy and emotions of people that we come into contact with. Interesting then how there's been no science to actually study these chakras. Oh wait, you're gonna bring up Reiki later. Joy. This works in tandem with the thought realm that we discussed last week, as thoughts are on a vibratory level. Wait, you didn't bring up thoughts as being on a vibratory level or whatever the hell that means. Last week, you just said there's this thought realm. Granted, I don't buy into the fucking thought realm thing anyway, so why should I buy into this? Oh yeah, right, uh, you're speaking to your flock. Never mind. Chakras are energy points that run vertically from the top of your head down your spine. Depending on how you look at it, there are 7, 8, or 13 primary chakras, as well as over hundreds of smaller, less important ones that are just scattered around the body. I'm going to cover the 8 and 13 later on, so for now let's just stick with the basic 7. Uh, you know, despite that Jager bomb, I don't think I have enough alcohol in me to fully appreciate this video. I'm just saying. <sighs> Ow. Your chakras are kind of like the etheric motor of the soul. Not only do chakras draw in energy, each and every chakra radiates an energy of vibration and govern over a major organ or gland connected to other body parts that resonate of the same frequency. If they're so connected to these body parts, why hasn't there been any science that actually says that these things exist? I'm starting to sound like a broken record here. When one chakra center is out of sync, it may eventually affect the organs and glands that it's connected to, and cause chakras neighboring them to also go out of sync, causing a chain reaction and many bodily imbalances. My entire thought on this section of the video is this is psychology for people who don't actually buy into psychology. Really, if you want to know more about this stuff, Read an actual psychology book. There's interesting stuff in there. This is pure grade bullshit. Pure grade bullshit. Does that, does that even make sense? I don't know. It, it probably makes more sense than anything I'm hearing in this damn video. Your mind alone cannot nurture your whole being, nor can a proper food diet solve all of your problems. I just want to put in that part about the diet thing for not solving all your problems. Naturopathy, eat your fucking heart out. Spirit science disagrees with you. One bullshit science disagrees with another bullshit science. This makes me happy. The order of the chakras actually go from the bottom up, starting with red, and changing vibrations in each chakra until you get to violet. Remember this bit for later. When you break light apart, you get seven colors. These are the same seven colors that our physical body is tethered to. What would you see if you were to look at a human through an etheric prism? Are we beings of light? Think about it. Oh, beings of light. <sighs> at the very least, you didn't go into the E equals MC squared thing where everything is actually energy. Oh God, that's going to be another episode, isn't it? I swear I haven't watched any other episodes besides these first two in that stupid human history video. But if that comes up... That, I, I, I think I'm gonna go even crazier, okay? The first chakra is survival and is connected to the adrenal gland. The next one is sex or interaction, which is connected to the gonad. Wait, wait, wait. Can you that? I thought you said these things started at the bottom and worked their way up. The kidneys are above the gonads. In fact, I'm pretty sure the kidneys are above the female reproductive organs, generally speaking, as well. So, if you're starting at the bottom and working your way up... Ah, why am I trying to make sense of this? Do you know of a time when you were struggling with your ego, or didn't seem to have a heart, or couldn't express yourself? If you or anyone you know have a problem or come off too strong in any of these traits, the reason why is because of an imbalance within the chakras. Uh, y 
you, you see why I was having trouble dealing with this episode? It's all just word salad. It, it means nothing. Unless you buy into the entire thought will thing you brought up into the first video. Ugh. Oh. Okay, so we know what chakras are now, yet we haven't even begun to scratch the surface of this topic. Actually, no, we don't know what chakras are. You just kind of blah 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 blah. Word salad comes out, and you kind of expect that to be an adequate description. No. No, it's not. I still have no idea what a chakra is. It's a wheel vortex of some kind that connects to. If. If this is actual science, and it works the way you describe, how come nobody's actually found this stuff out yet? How come it's not in any major publication, any peer-reviewed publication? Near as I can tell, you're just pulling this stuff out of your fucking ass. As we know, each chakra resonates to a color that we just discussed. Doing things like wearing clothing that matches the color of a chakra will cause it to resonate. I remember when I first learned about this, all of my chakras were closed except for my throat, which was way too open. The reason for this was because my bedroom was painted blue, as well as my bed sheets were blue, and every night I would get a chakra boost in that one area. Some people would say you talk too much as it is. I just gotta put that out there. How many times did I said that this video? How many times did I say that last video? I'm kind of talking right now to put my voice out there, but I'm wearing gray, which doesn't really fit into any of your chakras, plus this wall is mostly white, um, which is pretty much all the colors combined. Um, why am I thinking about this again? Sunlight is our main source and provider of light, heat, and energy. Sunlight itself consists of energies in the form of cosmic rays, gamma rays, x-rays, visible light rays, infrared rays, microwaves, and even radio waves. Lying in the sun for half an hour can give you a powerful energy boost. So apparently we're solar-powered creatures. Yeah, pardon me if I don't go on the solar-powered diet. Eating food that matches the chakra colors are good as well. Eating red tomatoes and apples are good for the root chakra. Eating greens are good for the heart. Does this make you want to eat healthier? Actually, what makes me want to eat healthier is the fact that I am, uh, a little overweight. I suppose that beer and the no Jager bomb isn't helping much either. Although it is actually helping me kind of understand this video a little bit. Only to the point where, though, you know, it's not actually painful to watch. Color baths are a really relaxing way to open a chakra. You can get this organic fluid that you put in your bath, which changes the color of the bath. You can just lay back and relax and get an energy boost from the water itself. See, here's the thing. If uh, the water is a particular color, it means it's actually bouncing that color back to your eyes. It's absorbing all the other colors, in other words. So, if the water is a particular color, and, or heck, even if you're wearing a particular color, you're preventing all the other, you're prevent, you're actually accepting every color, but that color into your body and onto yourself. So, how exactly are you absorbing that energy again when that energy is bouncing off to everybody else? How does this help you and not help everybody else? Maybe you're putting everybody else out of balance. Finally, and this is the best way to open your chakras hands down, go get Reiki. I kid you not, it is the equivalent of spiritual surgery. And here I'm reminded of Dr. Oz letting his, I think it's his wife, come into surgery and do Reiki over them, if, you know. Stopping a surgical procedure to have some psychic mumbo-jumbo Reiki whatever come in and do that over your body, I'm sorry. If that was me in the operating room, I would be pressing charges. Because that person is actually endangering your life by stopping the surgery. <sighs> Yeah. 
seriously. You're in surgery. What you want them to do is get you in and out of that room as quickly as possible. Any break in the procedure is allowing time for something to go wrong. Seriously. <sighs> do I want to say? It? Yeah, I'm going to say it. Fuck Dr. Oz, okay? Fuck him. This is for him. Reiki masters are people who have had spiritual training on seeing your chakras. Yeah, they can actually see them through the third eye. <sighs> James Randi has $1 million set aside for anyone who can actually show that that sh shit works, okay? For some reason, nobody's taking him up on that challenge. I wonder why. Reiki masters can also typically communicate to your higher self for you, and ask you what you need to progress in your path. Less meat. Well, that is true, but it's still really tasty. And it's red. Actually, red meat. Shouldn't that stimulate... Yeah. Why would I want less meat? Traditional healthcare at this time is unable to naturally or totally alleviate symptoms or cure all of our problems. This means it is up to us to improve our health condition. This is getting into that kind of mumbo-jumbo pseudo-scientific pseudo-medical bullshit that really gets me pissed off. It's your fault! It's all your fault! Bull fucking shit! Go back to that DNA stuff you were talking about earlier. A lot of what goes wrong with us is, is actually encoded in there. Not everything, granted, but a lot of it is. A lot of it goes down to just what our bodies are. A lot of this stuff is hereditary, or can be hereditary. Are you going to say every hereditary disease is actually your own fault? If so, seriously, fuck you. And that's basics of chakras. Believe it or not, we haven't even begun to scratch the surface of this incredible and complex topic. Ugh. Well, considering that that was like bare bones of nothing, I would certainly hope that uh, we've barely scratched the surface because you've said nothing. Ugh, but it gets worse. Look what's coming up next episode. Next week, we're going to look at indigo children and super psychics. Indigo children and super psychics. I'm going to need a lot more of these for that one. In the meantime, folks, I'm Firefly4F4, Andrew. Despite the downness of this, stay shiny.